Amy Klobuchar is continuing her assault on Medicare for All. And look, I really don't know why I'm even talking about her. She has consistently polled at 1% and she's now at 1.8% following her post-debate surge. So she's going to be out of this soon. Um, but I mean, her criticisms of Medicare for All, they're so shallow, so intellectually lazy that I feel compelled to respond because this is the level of political analysis that you'd expect from a Fox News host, that you'd expect from a Republican. And really, at the rate that she's going, soon she's going to be talking about Venezuela and uh, fear-mongering about socialism. But regardless, this is what she had to say about Medicare for All. She trotted out the most laziest attack ever. I get concerned when some of the other candidates are making promises that I don't think that um, they can keep. No. So you're saying that Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are not being straight with people by how they would pay for all these programs? Yes. Have you made that case, do you think, to some of those progressive voters who say now's the time to think big? Yeah, but I'm thinking big too. Essentially, Senator Warren said, though, that you're not thinking big enough, you're not thinking bold enough. I guess and big enough only means that everything's so for whatever reason, the audio cut out towards the end, but she said free stuff. So like any standard Republican, she is now bemoaning free stuff. And then she, of course, trotted out the, how are we going to pay for it argument? Brilliance. Bernie Sanders has been explicitly clear in saying how we finance Medicare for all. It's a single payer system. So we all pay into it with a small payroll tax, a tax significantly higher on people making upwards of $250,000 per year. They can afford that, and that's how we pay for it. We eliminate copays, premiums, and deductibles, but increase taxes, and overall, we get better health care. It's comprehensive, it's free at the point of service, and we save money. That's how we pay for it. But if you're really concerned, Amy, about how we pay for things, let me ask you this. How are we going to pay for Donald Trump's military budget, the $700 billion military budget that you voted to increase in 2017? How are we going to pay for that, Amy? Why is it that we're only asked how we're going to pay for things that help people? But when it comes to policies that lead to death and destruction, uh, there's no question. We just we have the money for it. It is incredibly frustrating. This is a double standard that you'd expect from Republicans, but when Democrats trot it out, it's especially evil, right? Because they are ostensibly supposed to be our allies, at least to an extent. They should be the ones that would defend Medicare for All to the point where they say, look, I don't agree with Medicare for All, but asking how we pay for it it's kind of a ridiculous question considering Donald Trump didn't find a way to pay for his tax increase. We just, you know, put that on the credit card. We always raise the military budget, never disclose how we're going to pay for that. So let's not talk about how we're going to pay for things unless we actually figure out a way to pay for all of our policies that benefit the war machine and elites. But, you know, instead, she's just being lazy and asking, how are we going to pay for Medicare for all? I mean, keep it up, Amy. You can uh, surge. You probably peaked at 1.8%. I think the highest she went was 2%, maybe. So, uh, in other words, Democratic Party primary voters, they're not buying what you're selling. Most Democrats want single payer. Most people, a majority of Americans, support Medicare for all. Now, support has dipped since liars like you have spread disinformation since you've entered the race, nonetheless, is still supported by a majority of Americans. So you're not going to be successful at driving down support for Medicare for All because people like myself, people like Bernie Sanders, we will actively fight against the misinformation that you're spreading. But what you are telling us is more about yourself. You're telling us that you're an opportunist and you're attacking this because you want to protect the health industry. Well, I say to hell with them and to hell with you. You're not going to win. So just drop out and endorse whatever corporatist Joe Biden um, because you're not going to win. So all of these attacks, they're moot because uh, you are a loser who has remained perpetually at 1%. And that's not going to change anytime soon.